we dream of a Christianity that looks like Jesus again. We, we, we read the, the words of the gospel and, and Jesus' you know, the things that he said in those red letters. And, and we say, what if he really meant this stuff? What if we were to live our lives based on, on the, the words of Jesus? And that's, that's what this book's about. In Red Letter Revolution, best-selling authors Tony Campolo and Shane Claiborne undertake the world-shaping mission to understand how Jesus' words could change everything if we'd only give them a chance. What if Jesus meant the stuff he said? And, and uh, I began to realize that so many of the things I had learned in Sunday school um, were, were dodging the real heart of the gospel. And it became really clear to me that if the church continues to lose young people, it won't be because we've made the gospel too hard, but because we've made it too easy. And that's what this project was really about, is, is, is saying, well, what does it look like to, to surrender all to Jesus and to try to live in the way that he teaches? If one word was to summarize this book for me, it would be risky. Uh, it's a very risky book. We took a lot of risks in saying things that we felt really needed to be said, not to be sensationalist, but in fact saying, these are statements that I think most Christian preachers would like to make if they thought they could get away with it. Why are we living such safe lives? You know, tiptoeing through life just to die safely. And, and, and he talked about this study where old people were uh, being asked a few questions. They said, what, what would you do differently? And they said, we would risk more. And it, it occurs to me that, that like a lot of us Christians, like we, we've risked such little with our lives. And yet we're living in a world that demands imagination and risk and is uh, compelling us to live into new patterns. If I was a pastor, I think I would uh, take this book and form a couple of study groups and give out the book and let the people read and react and to listen to what they had to say and to uh, enter into a dialogue with them. I would hope that they wouldn't simply stand up and boom, lay it on people, but they would invite people to dialogue and to discuss the controversial subjects matter that's in here. We've hit almost every hot button issue that the church is facing in the 21st century. And uh, we think that Jesus speaks directly to each and every one of them. Christianity spreads best, not through force, but through fascination. And a lot of what we do is tell stories of folks that are living out a, a Christianity that reminds the world of Jesus. And that's what Jesus did, was he fascinated the world with God's love and showed the world what God looked like, and everybody was magnetized. And we think that Jesus still has that same power today. Young people say they don't go to church because church is boring. I, I don't want to get too hot and bothered on this, but how do we take the most exciting, dynamic figure in human history who said some of the most shocking and revolutionary things that have ever been said and made it boring? That's what I want to know, and that's what this book is out to challenge. Don't give up on Jesus because of the Christians. I, I, read the words of Jesus again, and then ask yourself, what if he meant it? Maybe he did mean it, and maybe it will cause a total revolution of my life.